सोने का होता है ना बीज मोटा होता है इतना तो कपास का बीज बरीक होता है कपास का हाँ जी कपास का Greetings. Um, if you would not mind, please, for the record, uh, stating your name and your expertise. Um, my name is Dr. Vandana Shiva, but it's not the expertise for my doctorate that I want to talk about today. It's expertise in living and being part of life, and also the understanding of every violation of the rights of the earth, of all beings, including human beings. Thank you, and I understand that you have a panel of witnesses and experts to talk about the agri-food industry and GMOs, and if you would not mind providing your own testimony on that topic for the tribunal. Yeah, we've, we've got an amazing team mm -hmm. of people who for 30 years since GMOs were brought into the industrial agriculture system, which I can also describe as the fossil agriculture system, um, uh, they'll be here to give witness, um, and I, I, you will introduce them individually. I will just introduce the case uh, of GMOs. The first violation is a violation of the integrity of life in its self-organization, self-determination, and self-evolution because the rights of Mother Earth is a recognition that all beings are self-organizing and all beings have intrinsic worth and intrinsic value. So GMOs go hand in hand with patenting. A patent is a claim to invention. In effect, with GMOs, a world order is being created where life on Earth is being defined as the invention of corporations, which are themselves inventions. The second violation is the fact that in our rights of Mother Earth, draft in the Declaration of the Rights of Mother Earth, in 2.1i, we talk about the right to not have the genetic structure of beings modified or disrupted in a manner that threatens its, its integrity or vital and healthy functioning. A GMO is a change in the genetic structure by introducing genes that don't belong to the plant, usually toxic genes, forcing the plant to express a toxin that is not part of its structure, adding to it antibiotic resistance markers, adding to it viral promoters, each of which is a violation of the self-organization, self-regulation of, uh, of the organism itself. The genes added in GMOs are toxic. They move through wind and pollination and contaminate biodiversity, taking away the rights of the biodiverse varieties and species to be free of pollution. We have cases of this. We have Percy Smyser's case. We have the case of um, uh, Steve Marsh in Australia, who are then fined by the corporations who say the genes in your crops are our property, so you're a thief. That perversion of law, which should be based on polluter pays, now becomes the polluter gets paid because of the combination of a toxic technology and intellectual property rights linked to it. And the distortions by those who would like to maintain the war against the earth, the war against people, appropriate the resources of the planet, and create the time-tested divide and rule policy as they push more disasters on the planet and on us. Thank you for your time. There will be testimonies now. Yes. The order you choose, but I just want to say thank you to Jose okay. Ove, to Marie Monique, to uh, Andre Lou, to Ronnie Cummins, who are all here. 
Um, I know the time was short, but I noticed there's Will Allen, but I don't think he'll be able to speak. Um, but thank Oh, yeah, there will be cross-examination. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe we have a, a question or two from the judges or the tribunal for you. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Vandana. I, my question, I have two questions. One is, um, can you speak on the crisis of farmers um, committing suicide because of genetic engineering and the facts that this is having a human rights aspect of this battle? And secondly, how is the global movement response has been as a, as a response, as a remedy to genetic engineering? What has been the global organizing uh, that's happening? Where are you hopeful? Okay, the first thing is the issue of patenting is a violation of the intrinsic worth of living species. But it also leads to a violation of human rights because it allows these corporations to have a monopoly over seed, which is a commons, which came from the farmers in the first place. But through royalty collection, they push the prices up, they drive out other players or lock them into licensing arrangements. 60 Indian cotton seed companies are locked in by Monsanto. They can't sell anything but the BT1 earlier, and because it failed, now the BT2, which is also failing. Um, farmers varieties are destroyed in the name of being primitive in the name of not giving enough yield, even though the native cottons we are growing organically are giving more output. The price jumped from five rupees a kilogram before Monsanto entered the scene with the GMO cotton. Monsanto pushed it up to 4,000 rupees a kilogram. The jump is about 80,000%. But it is not reliable because it's creating new pests because it has tampered with the self-regulation of the plant. And therefore, farmers are spending even more on pesticides. The farmer gave evidence. We used to spray once in the, tr in, in the conventional hybrid. Now we are spraying 20 times, and the pests, like the white fly, are still not controllable. The high cost of chemicals, high cost of seed, which are non-renewable, has meant that farmers are getting trapped in debt. More than 300,000 farmers have committed suicide. The, major, the suicide started in the BT cotton areas. The larger number of suicides are still in the BT cotton areas. The way the corporations play a trick is they show national averages. Most of the country doesn't grow cotton. So you make a national average in you know, 1.2 billion people, it's very easy to show it as not changing. But if you go to the cotton areas where 95% of the cotton is BT cotton, the graph of suicide climbs. And that's the area where we should be looking. How is the global movement responding to it? Of course, on the area of no patents on seed, even governments set this uh, t uh, agreement, the Intellectual Property Rights Agreement, Article 27.3b of the WTO TRIPS Agreement, which we put in a clause, we fought so hard, said it should be reviewed four years after the WTO came into force, in 99, it was reviewed. Everyone said, everyone said patents on life are wrong. That review has been blocked by Monsanto using the US government, which means a correction of the violation of the nature's rights and human rights has not been allowed to be made, even though it's a mandatory obligation in the international trade treaties. That movement continues within law. In India, we made sure our law has an Article 3J, which says biological processes are not inventions, recognizing that nature produces seed, not Monsanto. We've organized a global seed freedom campaign, a global seed freedom movement. We have had laws that would have criminalized seed saving local farmers' varieties and diversity. We've had those laws on seed rolled back in Europe, in India, in Colombia, um, all over. In the United States, they are calling seed libraries where few people save a few packages of seeds in the public library. They're calling them agri-terrorists. Mm -hmm. Saving seeds evolved over thousands of years is agri-terrorism. Pushing GMO seeds that's killing life on Earth must be protected through all kinds of operations. In terms of the GMO, most of the world, 
was, you know, they had thought if all seeds would be GMOs by 2000, most of the world is GMO free. That's the detail you will be able to hear from the other expert witnesses. Thank you, and, and Nemo Bassi had one final question. Thank you, Dr. Shiba, but I'm going to pass. You already responded to what I was going to ask. BT cotton is modified to be a pesticide by itself. Yes. And yet they're not killing the pest. No, they're creating new pests. There's 300% increase in what were not pests becoming pests. The white fly you saw, that little, little white uh, deposit, has never attacked cotton traditionally. It's a new pest. And there's scientific evidence that shows that when a plant gets a Bt toxin, which doesn't belong to it, and it's expressing it all the time, it weakens the plant's ability to be resilient to other pests, so it becomes vulnerable to new pests, and the bollworm itself has become resistant. Thank you. I, I, I'm sorry, I believe we have just very, very Doctor. brief one question or two left, yes. How are you? Hello, doctor. I will speak in French, but there is translation. I would like to know if you know about the recent work that has been done by, the, uh, by Professor Seralini. He wrote on the disease linked to GMOs, uh, animal diseases, due to cons GMO consumption. Actually, uh, he proved that these GMOs are, are very toxic and poisonous. Um, so, of course, Dr. Serralini and I um, face the same kind of assault by these corporations, he for his studies on the impact on health, human health, animal health, me for my studies and our work with farmers on the issue of debt and suicides. But this question would be very well answered by one of the presentations by Andre Lu, who's going to focus precisely on glyphosate and Roundup resistant crops. So if you give me permission, I pass it on to him. Thank you very much for your wonderful testimony.